Studio One has a few tools that can help make recording audio a bit easier for us, particularly if we're recording alone. And these would be the auto punch feature, pre-roll and pre-count. So in this tutorial, we're gonna cover those in depth. And before we get started, if you're someone who's having issues with learning Studio One or would like to speed up the learning curve, I do offer one-on-one -on -one training through Zoom. So you can check the information in the description of this video or the pinned comment below for more information on that. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at these features. So we'll start with the pre-count. Now the pre-count is going to give you a count before you enter into record. So you can set a specific number of bars that it's going to pre-count before you begin recording. So if I were to position the song cursor here on bar three, let's go ahead and press T to add an audio track. I'll add a mono, click OK. Let's arm that for recording. I'll take the monitoring off so that won't feed back in the tutorial. So now we've got our audio track and we want to be recording at bar three, but we'd like to have a count. So what we could do is come down below and in the transport, we have this pre-count button. So we can click once to activate that, or we can press shift and C to toggle that on and off. And then now if I enter into record, we're going to get a count for four beats. Notice that we can see the count on the record button. Then we enter into record after four beats or one bar. I'll press the space bar to stop. Now, if we click on the wrench icon here, we can access a few different settings for the pre-count and pre-roll as well as our click. So pre-count is on again, shift and C, we can turn that on and off or we can click on the checkbox. And if you notice here to the right, we have bars. So if I were to change this to two bars, let's close this out, delete this recorded event, come back to our bar three and then enter into record. You see here we have a count of eight beats or two bars before we enter into record. Now, if you notice the click does go away after it begins recording. So let's come back to the wrench icon. And once I press C to activate the metronome here, we could also click on that icon. Notice here at the bottom, we have click and play. So now let's actually take this back to one bar. Come back to bar three, enter into record. And then this, this time after the count of one bar, the click track is going to remain. So it wasn't before because I didn't have the metronome activated, but I wanted to bring this up so that you can see that you can have the click and play and take that off. If you want to only have the click on the pre count, then it will stop after the recording has begun. Okay. Now let's take a look at the pre roll. We'll delete that out. Come again to bar three. Now what this is going to do is take the playback cursor, however many bars you have set for it to go back. So right now we have it set to one bar. So um, let's deactivate the pre count. We can then activate the pre roll here by clicking on this icon or pressing O on our QWERTY keyboard. So I'll click once to activate. Now, when I enter into record, our playback cursor is going to go back one bar and then enter into record on three. So we see we move back one bar and now we enter into record on three. So that's going to be the difference between the pre count and pre roll. And as we saw with the pre count, if we were to change this to two bars, let's close this out, come back to bar three, enter into record. Now our playback cursor is going to jump to the beginning or two bars back before we enter into our record bar one, bar two. Now we enter on bar three. So these two tools can be really useful if you're recording alone and you need to get set up and positioned. If you're recording guitar, you want to get prepared for recording your vocal. These are useful to make use of for that. And you know, a few other things. So now let's move on to take a look at the auto punch feature. So with this, we need to set our loop locators over the region that we'd like studio one to automatically enter into record and also automatically stop recording, but it will continue playback after uh, it has left the loop region. So coming up to the top of the ruler here, our cursor changes to a pencil. 
We can then click hold to set our loop locators. And we can also hold control and click at the top of the ruler here or in the center and set the left locator. We can hold alt and click to set the right locator. Now coming again to the transport at the very bottom, we have auto punch and we can activate that by clicking once or pressing I on the QWERTY keyboard. And for this, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna go ahead and click on record. We don't begin until we actually enter into the loop region that we've set. Once we go beyond that, recording is automatically stopped. So playback is gonna continue on until you press the space bar to stop. And one other thing to keep in mind is that if we were to activate loop by pressing the forward slash on the keyboard or by clicking on this icon here in the transport, once we get to our auto punch area, it's going to continue to loop into record and record different takes. So let's once again come into record. We enter into record. But now since the loop feature is on, we're gonna to continue to cycle through and record different takes of this, uh, for this track. So now once I press the space bar to stop, we can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this button that we can click and see the different takes that we've recorded from each time it looped. And we can also right click on this event and we have select take where we can choose the takes here. We can also unpack these to tracks, to new layers or to existing layers. So if we unpack to tracks, then all of those different recordings that we did each time it looped are gonna be set to different tracks. If I control Z and then right click again, unpack takes to layers, then we're gonna have layers. And then once we're here, we can select different portions and those are gonna be pushed to the top so we can choose the best sections of the uh, recordings, the different passes that we did uh, in this mode. And I'm gonna control Z to come back to, let's actually just delete this event out and start over. The last thing that I wanna touch on here is if we access the record panel, which we can get to by clicking on this gear icon in the transport, we can see that we can activate takes to layers so that when we enter into this loop recording, our takes are automatically going to be unpacked to layers as soon as we stop our recording. So I will stop and you can see that these are automatically placed on different layers. And we can then again come through the same process of choosing the portions of the recordings that we'd like to use for our perfect take. Okay, so this has been a look at pre-count, pre-roll, and auto-punch. I hope that you got something useful out of this, and I will see you in the next tutorial.